Welcome back to the Starting Over series with V. We're gonna talk about something very important. We're gonna talk about how to forgive yourself today. And that can be forgiving yourself for knocking the coffee over, something as small as that, or having said something that you think might have been the wrong thing to somebody, or to massive life-changing mistakes. I have been on the entire spectrum. I've messed up, I've made mistakes, I have let myself down, I've betrayed myself, I've betrayed people around me. We are not our mistakes but what we do with them is what matters. We think that living in the past and ruminating on our mistakes and feeling bad about ourselves is somehow gonna make it right. When deep down you know that that's not the thing that's gonna make it right. The thing that's gonna make it right is if you can learn and grow from it and then become a more spectacular human being where you can make a better difference, where you cannot repeat the same behaviors because you've learned something. Waking up to finally realize that I'm so sick of myself. I am so sick of shaming myself and living in this space where I'm not improving as a human being because I'm walking around as an unhealed human. If we keep walking around as if we are our mistakes, we are walking around as unhealed human beings and that can be one of the most dangerous things because that person is walking around feeling damaged, angry, angry with themselves, hating themselves, therefore they spread that hate and anger on others whether they know it or not, and they are prone to making the same mistakes, to repeating the same patterns of behavior. Even if they don't make that exact same mistake again, the pattern of behavior that perhaps got them there, it's not gonna change. That is the danger. And so here's the bottom line. How are you gonna level up if you are walking around as if you are your mistakes? How are you gonna level up if you keep living in the past? How are you gonna move forward if you're stuck in the past? You can't do both. And I think that a lot of us, and I used to be this way, we wanna just stay stuck because somehow there's some comfortability, there's some comfort in the stuckness, in not having to face things head on, and not having to make actual changes. There's a comfortability there, but comfortable gets you nowhere. Comfortable actually, it either keeps you where you are or makes you go backwards. So let's talk self-sabotage. A lot of us have done it. We are familiar with self-sabotage, yet we continue to do it. Our higher intelligence tells us this lifestyle isn't working for me. These patterns aren't working, yet we continue to self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is like this sneaky part of us that tells us we're not good enough, that we don't deserve success, we're not worthy of love, we're not worthy of good things happening. Therefore, we, in little ways, which lead to medium-sized, big ways, that leads to us messing things up for ourselves. It can be little acts of doing things that we know are not that great for us, or they're a little bit harmful, but we do it anyway to make ourselves feel better, to numb ourselves because we can't face ourselves, or they can be extreme damaging acts, life-changing acts, signaling a cry for help. We start thinking, I knew I'd screw this up. I deserved this. And it's like those mistakes become proof that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy. My experience with self-sabotage stems from childhood. I grew up in a strict household where I felt like my worthiness and whether I was worthy of love depended on whether I was perfect, depended on my achievements. Growing up, I felt like if I made any mistakes, if I stepped out of line, I was no longer worthy of love. When I would make mistakes, because we all inevitably do, especially as kids, I would be so frightened that I would hide, I would retreat and try to hide those mistakes. It was the beginning of living this hidden life. So then you kind of get crafted into this robotic thing that you feel like you can't not be perfect, but then you're holding everything inside and you're actually not perfect and you screw up a lot. There's nowhere that it can go. This led me to walking around as a very unhealed adult, but somebody who actually could function very well on the outside. For a long time, I really felt like a dysfunctional, highly functional adult. People could come to me for advice and I could be that strong person, but inside I was feeling like there was a war. Anyways, in walking around as this unhealed human who didn't really know myself on the inside, had no love for myself really, I ended up self-sabotaging and making very poor decisions. I was setting myself up to fail because deep down, I didn't believe I was worthy of success. I didn't believe I was worthy of good things. It's taken a lot of self-reflection and self-work to recognize that this pattern was dangerous and to start to want to break free from it. 
I've had to learn to forgive myself for just being a human being, for making mistakes and being imperfect. That part is the hardest thing for people to do is to forgive themselves for just being human. So if you find yourself in this cycle of self-sabotage, I just want you to know that you're not alone. I never thought that I would be this person, even to sit in front of a camera to say that I used to be this person. Okay, so let's talk about the shame vortex. You know that feeling of when you mess up and then instead of saying, I did a bad thing, I made a mistake, you say, I am a bad thing. I am a mistake. You make it a part of your identity. You take it on as if it were you, like it's your whole identity. To you, you become that bad thing. So it's not like, I did something wrong. It's, I am something wrong. That's the shame vortex. And I wanna hit on something really important. Guilt and shame are not the same thing. Guilt can be healthy. It makes you not wanna repeat the mistakes that you make. It makes you not want to treat people badly or treat yourself badly. It's like, I did that thing, shoot, I feel guilty for having done that, I won't do it again. Guilt is, I made a mistake. Shame is, I am a mistake. It's not just about what you did, it's about who you think you are and who you think then others think you are. And then once you start identifying yourself with your mistakes, then it's like your vision of yourself becomes really blurry and you continue to make the same mistakes or you're more likely to do that because you've assumed this identity. So even if you don't want to be that thing, but you're like, well, I am this thing. I don't wanna be, but I am. So let me just continue. I'll continue this behavior. Oops, I didn't mean to. It just happened. I can't help it. Shame also keeps you isolated. It keeps you hidden. It eats up a part of you inside that you don't realize is dying because you start to believe that you don't deserve love, you don't deserve forgiveness or even happiness. And that if people saw you for who you are, if they discovered what you did, that they would have nothing to do with you anymore. They wouldn't want anything to do with you. You know, that could be true for some people, but those are not your people. The real ones, your real people, you know where to find them and they will stick around for you. And it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. I got to this point in my life where I was so sick of hiding and so sick of myself for inflicting all of this shame upon myself. I had to make the conscious decision of, I'm not living in shame anymore. Others can shame me, but I'm not gonna shame myself. And once you get to this place where you actually like yourself and you've forgiven yourself, you start to care less and less about whether others like you. And shame, it can really harm you. It can lead to all kinds of self-destructive behaviors from self-sabotage, like we talked about before, to things like addiction, anxiety, depression, and even physical health issues. Shame is the root of so much, so much of why we suffer and the pain that we have, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. And I didn't realize until this year and in going into therapy, how I have been living my entire life in shame. It's not something that I would have ever ad identified with. It's like this toxic energy that eats away at your well-being. Okay, let's move on from shame. First, you've got to own your mistakes. Deep down, we both know that unless you can look within and really take accountability, nothing's going to change. Nothing is going to get better. And it is not about beating yourself up. Let's not make a meal of it. It happened. Past tense. You can't take it back. You can't change it. But what you can do is try to make it right. And even if you can't make it physically right, you gotta make yourself right. And owning your mistakes, I would say, is just the first step. The real magic happens when you take the time to understand why you made the mistake in the first place. Why did this happen? Get curious, not judgmental with yourself. Maybe you were really frightened, or maybe you were stressed, or really exhausted, or maybe there was something deeper going on, like, real deep and it's about understanding what was happening in your life in your mind that led you to that decision when you just flail about through life and you know self-destruct and do things without realizing why why do i even do them that's the danger that's reckless just ask yourself what was going on with me in that particular moment or season how was my mental state what was i trying to achieve what was missing? What was I scared of? All those things. I've had to ask myself all those questions. And once you've owned and understood your mistake, then that's when you can properly move forward because you have a clearer mind of who you are and how you want to make things right and how you want to improve. This is where growth happens. Do you want to grow? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't want to grow. They are perfectly content 
with how they are and they're gonna stay there. And whatever you discover, whatever you learn, use that as knowledge to make better choices in the future. That's all we can do is move forward. But so many of us wanna stay stuck in the past. We let things trigger us. We let every little thing that reminds us of the past bring us back there. How are you helping yourself? How are you helping your life? And lastly, this is really important. If you take anything away from this, is that you are not your mistakes. Your mistakes do not have to define you forever. The people who hear you are not your mistakes and they can't seem to see above that, they're like, no, I, I am, I am, I am. Shame vortex, work on your shame. You're stuck there and you're deciding to stay stuck there. Mistakes, you can argue, are necessary. They can be used as tools to just fuel you to move forward and become a better human being. They give you experience. They give you battle wounds that make you wiser and stronger. And mistakes are just a part of your story. They are not the entire book. They are just one piece of the puzzle. They don't cancel out all the wonderful things about you, your kindness, your creativity, your resilience. Mistakes can teach you things that success never could. Success sometimes just makes people worse. Sometimes it makes people worse people, right? Our mistakes make us compassionate. They're what make us human and relatable. Every day is a new opportunity to write a new page in your book. Maybe your mistakes were just a chapter or two in your entire story. Your story is loading. I repeat, your story is loading. It's all still loading for you. How it ends, how it continues to load, that is entirely up to you. You have the power to choose how you see yourself and how you move forward. Nobody else is going to do it for you. And that starts with letting go of the idea, the lie, the delusion that you are your mistakes. At the end of life to say that you had some scrapes, that you really lived, that you messed up, you screwed up, but you made things right, you learned, you became a whole human, you became an amazing, much better person than you were five years ago, 10 years ago. That is the stuff of life but you have to believe that for you. You have to believe that for yourself, that you deserve that. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this, if it resonated with you, subscribe, all the things, and I'll catch you next week. Bye guys.